Burley Cell. Hello everyone and welcome back to Burley Cell. I'm your host Purified and today if you take a look at my desktop wallpaper you can see I'm getting a little excited for the new Star Trek movie that's coming up. So what I'm going to do is digitalize the Star Trek or something that looks like the Star Trek emblem into an embroidery file that you can import into uh, most embroidery, home embroidery machines. I use the Brother SC400 so I'll be exporting it into a DST file in this particular demonstration. The program that I'll be using to digitalize the embroidery file is SophieSo. SophieSo is free, it's available, um, I've got the link down below. It's a great program. Um, the first thing you're going to do is what I'm doing right now is save. Whenever you start a project that you're serious about, I create a save file right off the bat. So just jumping right in, the nice thing is, is you can take whatever image you want and import it using this little paintbrush looking tool right here. You get this little box that comes up and then you right click on the edge of the box around the black border and you choose whatever image you want to digitalize and it brings it in to like the background and what that means is that now that you have it imported you can trace over it using this tool right here which is the create an object outline tool and then you can just bring it over to your image that you want to start tracing and you left click and it puts down points so as you're putting down your points you're gonna notice that it's every third one I believe that turns into this green point and that has different controls to it than the other points when you're going to do a sharp angle you're gonna to want to make sure that you land on a green point and it's every third click so as for instance up here you can see how it's curving around the shape but when I put a green point down and go around that corner now I can make it a sharp turn so um, you want to keep that in mind now the rest of this is just following the same principle all the way around you want to make sure that when you get to a corner or a place that you need to make a sharp turn you land on a green point the points in between the green points are the points that allow you to curve the line and I'll show you at the end of this how to kind of fine-tune to make sure your line has the right curve to it and the next thing that we need to focus on is how to end it because I'm coming to the end here so just like uh, corner you want to end it but right right click on your green node and that'll end your shape for you so now that we've got our shape finished, we can kind of perfect the lines and make them look um, the right radius and whatnot and corners. And you do that by kind of what I mentioned earlier, just these inner nodes control the curve. And then the green nodes help form more of an anchoring point. And you also notice at the end here that it's not a it's not a joined object. It's two points. Right clicking ends it for you, but you've got to do it on a green. In a little bit here, when I turn this into a fill area, I'll show you how to join those two points. But I'm just going to finish up right now, real quick, just shaping the outline here until I get it to the way I want it. And then I'll remove the picture from behind it. You can toggle that on and off, and then you'll be able to see it better. I'm sorry that the, the lines kind of blend in, and you've got to probably look at it in full monitor size to, to make it out. But that's what it looks like without the background picture. And then you can scroll the mouse wheel, and let's bring it down to more of a realistic size. Looks good. So now we'll move on to the next part, which is the center part of the design the little star there and you're gonna do the same thing you're gonna put your first click down get to your third green dot which will be the green one when you get to the center of the angle there and that'll allow you to make the angle and then these are gonna have to be close together but uh, it's easy to make straight lines 
So you just make sure you get your green dots at the points of the star and the intersection of the angle of the star. And then when you get to the end, you want to make sure you land on a green point so that you can right click to end the stitch outline. Next you're going to want to right click the outline and then go into the outline properties. And then you're going to want to choose the type of stitch that you want to use for this. It's going to be a satin stitch, a nice about border, and then let's make it visible here by clicking Stitch Object Visible. All right, now that you can see it, might as well change the color of it so you can go into the Outline tab and you can change the stitch color. The color that you choose doesn't really matter, it's just for visual right now, and I'll tell you why later. Um, and that's it. We're not going to use the fill pattern and all these other settings. Um, I'm just going to leave at default for right now. So, move on to the next part, which is setting up the center outline. We're going to treat this one a little bit different, but we're going to go about it the same way. Go into the outline properties, and then on this one, we're going to choose running. And then I'm going to go into the outline tab and change the color right away. And I might get rid of this stitch in the end, but I'm doing this for a reason right now. Because when you put it to visible, um, you can see that it doesn't go the right shape. It's missing the endpoints. And there's a feature built into the program where you can go ahead and you can right click on the green nodes and you can force the stitch to that point. So in this case, I want to go around and force all these stitches and depending upon your design that you're making um, you might have to do it too you know so I'm just gonna go ahead and this will take care of that problem and then we'll have our star shaped the way I want I might move it around a little bit just to get it a little bit more linear but um, you get the point and now that we got the star done I want to go back to the outside edge here and then we're going to turn that area between that outside and star into a fill. And you do that by using the fill tool. So you've got this whole outline here. And basically you just click on it and then you've got all these points. And then you click anywhere else on that object. And you come back to the end. And then it'll ask you if you want to make the jump and then you just select yes I want to make the jump which will close those two gaps from where you started and ended and then it'll ask you if you want to end your fill pattern so it'll turn that whole area into a fill as you can see so next you want to hide it you can hide the region or the outline if you want but for this case right now we're gonna hide the region keep the outline and I'll be able to work on the star and with the star we're going to do the same thing as the outline we're going to go to the region editor and we're going to right click on it and because it's small the nodes are pretty close together we can choose any node and then and then it'll go solid and then you can choose any point and it'll basically close it. I haven't gone one way or another where it hasn't closed it so basically it gets it gets a little trickier when you go to the outside and you want to do different like outside fills or whatever but for this purpose you can see it's all green close the gap and then close the region then we'll go ahead and show fills again and we'll edit the big fill you just right click on it choose properties now ultimately I'm going to use a custom stitch to fill this region but there's other options as well you can use satin or zigzag or tatami those are all good but for this project um, I'm gonna go ahead and choose custom and then I'm gonna go into the custom tab and then you can add them and a little window will pop up and there's the one that we want um, but there's tons of other patterns to choose from 
but the one we want is tiles one and that's what we're going to choose then we'll go back and change the color of that program stitch um, to match what we want the output to be and like I said earlier um, the color doesn't really matter because it goes into the machine and when you're sewing each section it'll tell you what color to a thread to choose you can just choose whatever color you want in place of that you know recommendation now next in the region tab I want to allow complex holes because we have that star there so I don't want that sewing on top of a full embroidered pattern so I'm gonna allow a complex hole and then we can go in and edit the actual star itself now then we just right click on that choose the properties all right now we're gonna set the stitch as on this one I'm used to Tommy that'll be a nice contrast against that I'm gonna go ahead and change the color to match the color that I want it to resemble just for a better visual once again it's just the output of the code into the machine and then I'm gonna set it as a complex hole so now this is gonna inlay in the piece underneath underneath that allows complex holes So next we just go in and edit the properties of the outline stitch of this fill region, right clicking on just the outline stitch right here, the black line, and then um, I'm going to set it to no stitches. So the thought is that it will blend well with the outside without that outline stitch. So we'll see how that works. And then next I'll make it a little bit smaller here. And I'll zoom out a little bit so you can see it better in the full color. And then I'll bring in the background. But first I want to adjust the depth of this so that certain things stitch on top of certain things. Um, that's really controlled by the stitch order, but just for visual purposes right now and making it accurate throughout. Um, you can go in and change the position by just right clicking on the object and then we'll go ahead and make it smaller make it 3D and then next we'll start working on the stitch order so now that we're ready to start working on our stitch order uh, we'll group all these items together and basically just select everything as an object by clicking up here on the left and then you drag a rectangle and it selects everything and then you can just click this group objects orientation button and say yes and now it's all one solid object and save I've been saving throughout I probably cut out some of that but remember to keep saving alright so now that we've got it all grouped together everything will move as one and we can resize it and you basically just right click on the object and then go to resize, uh, rotate and resize and then resize selected objects. And then the box will pop up and then you can change this number with clicking on it and using the keypad or you can scroll. And I believe you either hold control or shift and it'll scroll in bigger increments. But um, it shows up in centimeters. I can't get it to inches. I don't know centimeter metric that well. I know it's a, a rough translation, but um, to get the exact size I want, I just went to Google and did a conversion. And we're going to do this at about an inch and a half. I might ultimately decide to go a little bit smaller. Um, I'm going to do a sew out first, a little test run to see how it how it looks and uh, how the stitch works. Also now that it's an object, um, I can go ahead and change the stitch order and just select stitch order and then a window will pop up and it's a simple drag and drop function. Um, whatever comes first stitches first in the window up here. So you just click on it and I'm going to want the major gold part to go down first. 
and then the outline and then the star and then I can um, see the lead-ins between the stitches Let me make this bigger here so that you can see which way the, the threads that will jump between the stitches beginning and end points look um, you want longer stitches for the jump points because it's easier to cut with the little scissors so um, that's something you want to consider while you're programming which comes you know when in the stitch order and then the also the other thing that you want to consider too is if there's an overlap what color do you want to be on top what do you want to be a little bit more pronounced or as a border or um, that type of thing so now that we've got that all sorted out we can go ahead and simulate it and it'll simulate how it's going to sew it'll show you the order the default stitch speed is kind of slow so I, I usually will bump that up to about a hundred but now you'll be able to see how your pattern is going to stitch out and then after this finishes stitching out we'll go ahead and show you how to export it to several different file types I'm going to choose DST but there's quite a few different ones and then basically you just go up to export and you save it to the location that you want to keep all your files at where you know you can find it and export it easily to your machine so there you have it the next video will be how to import the DST file into the Brother SE400 hope you enjoyed the video please leave your comments below subscribe to the channel if you like what you saw there's more videos coming out I'm Purified, and thanks for tuning in to Burley Cell. So.